Konnichiwa from Tokyo! What's up guys, we're Madison and Ivan, and today's mad adventure is sumo wrestling! Woo! So cool. sumo wrestling is something that I really wanted to do last time we were here in Japan. It's something that like we have been wanting to do for like four years now when we came to Japan on our honeymoon. Ivan tried so hard to get tickets and we couldn't get them anywhere, so we were so excited. It is finally time, four years later, for sumo wrestling! From the second we step off the metro, everything is sumo. Sumo themed restaurants, sumo statues, sumo signs, sumo vending machines. Even the manholes are sumo. And the stadium is so massive and beautiful. They definitely honored tradition with the design, even though it's a super modern building. It's huge. Oh, wow. This is the Grand Sumo Tournament, which is a huge deal. There's only six professional sumo tournaments a year, but there aren't very many people here right now because the matches start at 9 a.m. with the lower ranked divisions, and then it'll end at 6 p.m. with the top ranked wrestlers in all of sumo. The ring where they are actually wrestling is made of clay and sand and there's rice on the inside to honor Shinto tradition. Because before sumo was even about wrestling, sumo contests actually started between the 3rd and 7th century as a Shinto tradition to become a sumo as a thank you to God for a good rice harvest. And sumos were actually hired by samurai so they could practice with them and strengthen themselves. As you can pretty clearly see, there are no weight classes in sumo. The smallest guy can go up against the biggest guy. This is so wild. There's just a big ranking system and then different divisions you're in based on your rank. The different divisions mean different pay, different uniforms. But all you have to do is get them out of the circle or if they touch the ground with anything other than the bottom of their feet, they are out. And it moves so fast. Just like that, he is singing a song and the next wrestler is coming out. It's funny because when we got here, we heard the singing and we thought like something special was happening, but actually this just happens before every single match. There is always bowing at the end. This is just such a respectful game, which makes sense as Japan's national sport, a nation also known for being respectful and polite. Oh, yes. As a sumo, you actually live in special training stables where you have trainers that are former sumos. You eat certain meals and follow a specific training regimen dictated by those trainers and by tradition. So but young. in exchange for that, you truly can become a national celebrity, earn tons of money, and gain fans that follow you long into retirement. It's crazy to see them walk up like this because you know that they are fighting, but it feels like a sweet hug. He's like tickling him. Yeah. He's tickling him too. Oh my goodness. Cannot be ticklish to be a sumo wrestler. Oh. I used to want to be a sports news broadcaster and that is basically what I get to do right now. This is so much fun. Constantly like sweeping the sand as well to keep it not so messy. Remember, no weight classes. Oh, this is another crazy one. And you'd oh. think we'd be getting a little tired of it, having seen like 30 matches at this point, but... I'm trying to go to lunch, but I even got so caught up in the match. <laughs> I love with wrestling how it's just like constant action and like it just keeps changing like every minute or so there's a new match. Not all wrestling is like that. That's just sumo. Yeah, sumo wrestling is a, it's a good sport. I get it. I like it. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh. there we go. It's the loudest clap actually. By the time we come back from lunch, we have a feeling it's going to be a lot more crowded. So we decided to go on a quick tour of the stadium. 
Cash upon machines with so many sumo toys, sumo slap bracelets, sumo ponytail holders. We need this. <laughs> Boom! They have the banners like they have outside with their towels, sumo socks. I love how many like actually useful things there are too. So cute. Sumo wrestlers all around in their circle, like the traditional circle, and then it's like a little bag for you to like actually put things in. They're well, gonna do this later. Yeah. yeah. And then it's but it's the actual stadium oh, yeah. there with the circle and the lines. He's like on the tea bag and you put it in and he's like in the hot tub. <laughs> That's so fun. You gotta get out of here before I spend all our money. This is stadium food in Japan. <laughs> Beautiful sushi boxes. Reasonably priced too, $8. The premium one. The is premium the one, $12. I am in love. It's like a hot dog, but way better. They're also making it fresh here. Like you can get it and eat it at the sushi counter. There's a whole hall just for booths for fan clubs. How come this guy has a photo? Bento boxes. All sorts of good stuff in there. This area is all about sumo. Even the vending machines here are sumo themed with like sumo specific drinks. Oh, they're earrings. Oh, a whole cup full of earrings? This is fun. But it's why is it sumo themed? I don't know. Street artist sumo. I'm ready to eat like a sumo. Sumo wrestlers are athletes and they actually have a very specific regimen of what they eat. And we are excited because we are about to try one of the main staples of a sumo diet. Ready to eat like a sumo wrestler. Hey. Oh, oh, no, no. Open <laughs> yeah, palms. Open palms, open palms. <laughs> so this restaurant is really cool. We are on like the traditional Japanese mat. So we actually took our shoes off when we came in, which uh, was a little concerning because my shoes are really smelly right now. I kind of feel like you're like making yourself at home. I like that. Even the club, like everything in this area is sumo themed. And of course this restaurant is also sumo themed. We're literally getting the sumo traditional meal, the chanko nambe, the hot pot. We ordered the salt broth, which is the chicken broth option that they have here because there's like a superstition in this tradition. Any sort of two-legged animals, two-legged birds, like to eat that because it's like they are stable on their two feet. And when you're sumo wrestling, if you touch on the ground with anything other than your bottoms of your two feet, you lost. She brought out a plate just full of beautiful meats and vegetables. Having and onions and tofu and salmon and scallops and chicken, all sorts of stuff. A little cooking show. I have never had fish in a hot pot before. I've had a good amount of hot pot. First time. Mm. Really, really tender. That's really good. It feels very clean eating as well. Like no oils. Like when you go to a restaurant, you often get that like greasy, oily feeling. Not that just great. Fresh veggies, fresh meats. Boiled. Honestly, which makes sense because like sumo wrestlers would eat a lot of this. Mm. And you wouldn't want like the feeling, like it needs to be something that like feels clean. Keeping it healthier and light, not using so many oils so that when you walk out of here full to the brim with food, you still feel light and good. Super a atypical feeling at the very least where it's like, I think I eat a lot, but like you don't feel the usual like, oh, I'm so rich, so heavy. I feel lethargic, it's just, no, I, my stomach is just packed to the rim, but I feel great. <laughs> I can go walk a mile. They just came in and added food for the third time. <laughs> we thought we were doing well. We were like, oh yeah, we're eating our way through this sumo hot pot. And then they brought more. We forgot there was more on the plate and they added some scallops and mushroom. It's really tasty, but it is very simple in like the best of ways. I think, so often people see sumo wrestlers and they just think like big guys, you know, like, oh, what are they eating? 
It's just an insane amount of a healthy food. I remember back in LA, I was working on a TV show where we had sumo wrestlers come on as guests. And we literally were just feeding them like grilled chicken and veggies. And I think they did have a little rice and that was it. Like just an insane amount of that. Like you're, you're just making sure that what you're putting into your body is nutritious and is going to be used towards the athleticism that we're getting to see out there. This is awesome. One of the primary words to describe it is salt. Might be a little confusing. It was for me. But I completely agree that salt is actually one of the main ingredients here. Not in that like it's like a salty, like, but rather like because all the flavors are so subtle, you can really enjoy that like salty, umami pairing. That is almost the driving flavor. Like that is a slightly salted cabbage with some nice chicken broth flavor. <laughs> like that is the, the only way to describe it. It's, it's weird to call something, oh, that's the flavor of salt. But what it is and it's delicious. Part of why this became such a traditional meal is because the sumo wrestlers often live in what they call sumo stables. It's kind of like a hype house for sumo wrestlers and this is one of the meals that you could make for a lot of people at a sumo stable hype house. Speaking of sumo stables, let's go check one out. You know like Rocky Montage are like at the stable like working out. And that's a real stable? Yeah, and like lifting hay. <laughs> this, is a, this is what a sumo stable looks like. It is not like that. That's what I mentally pictured. <laughs> <laughs> da -da -da. Da -da -da. Sumo wrestlers, they bike just like us. Sumo wrestlers, they have apartments just like us. Sumo wrestlers, they have laundry just like us. Even this little sumo wrestler lives here. This is not bad, it's just like a good community housing situation. They'll have like a big cafeteria and training areas. And it is not a real stable <laughs> like some may expect. <laughs> In 1942, the 35th sumo champion started this stable. He was like an active sumo wrestler while he was training future sumo wrestlers. Oh cool. There have been 12 victories that have come out of this house. The crowds have gotten so big waiting to see the sumo wrestlers as they arrive. While we were gone, the museum at the stadium opened up where you can see championship belts and ornate ceremonial loincloths. This is the one I would want. It's so fun and colorful. And we learned this ritual the wrestlers do before every match is called Chico. Right. Now back up. <laughs> you have to do the squat like five times. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We just got back here and it is so much more packed than earlier. Getting crazy, like the vibe is so much more alive and electric. It's so much louder. The clapping is so much louder. <laughs> The refs are wearing like much more ornate clothing now and the wrestlers themselves are also wearing different clothing now. So it's it's like you can tell that we're advancing into the like higher leagues. That was a controversial one. All the refs are there to discuss. After further review, the calling in the ring stands. The guy in the navy loincloth wins. We're cheering for the green one because we love his sea green uniform. So they wipe down. He gets a whole bunch of salt in his hands. Oh my gosh, look at what? That's it's like so a snowball. Much. Yeah, he gets a, I mean, it's a massive snowball too. Whoa. He throws it. Before each match, wrestlers throw salt into the ring to purify it. At this tournament, 45 kilograms or 100 pounds of salt are prepared for each day, with over 650 kilograms being used throughout the full tournament. It might be my new favorite part. Whoa! Oh! Oh! Wow, that was close. That was a good one. Oh my gosh, he won? Oh, I did not think that was... I, could, I think the other guy put his hand down first. Oh. That was crazy. That was wow. risky though. That was super risky. He was so close to not winning that we couldn't even tell for sure that he won. Luckily, the refs are better at paying attention. <laughs> and the winner always humbles himself by staying back and serving the next wrestler, which is really cool. They serve the strengthening water, which is just regular water, but it's meant to give you strength and cleanse you. Refereeing is such an active job. 
Fringe on the uniforms is like in the area where you are not allowed to grab onto. Other than that, they're allowed to grab any part of each other's loincloth and it falls off. You are disqualified. So you better keep it tight enough that it's not falling off. That rarely happens, but it has before. <laughs> And now it's time for the top division. First, the wrestlers all come out for a ring entering ceremony wearing ceremonial aprons. This is the most excitement we've seen from the crowd all day. They know these wrestlers. The ceremony signifies a pledge that the wrestlers will fight fairly and with proper spirit. They come out in two separate groups. The first is the East and the second is the West. Then the top-ranking sumos perform a ring entering ceremony that serves as a purification ritual for the match. The matches begin with two big differences. Banners parade around at the beginning, displaying the sponsors of each match, and a check is given to the winner at the end of each match. We're in the big leagues, people. And some of you might be wondering, are these companies really paying to sponsor a match that takes less than 30 seconds? But these players have taken care of that by taking forever, adding TV time and drama while getting set. <laughs> The matches are getting bigger and bigger. These guys have so many sponsors that they have to go around in two circles. We have made it to the final match. These are the guys that are leading the tournament and they have not one, not two, not three, but four rounds of sponsors. And he keeps his lead and spoiler alert goes on to win the entire tournament. The tournament concludes with a bow twirling ceremony to ward off evil spirits as we head home. Today was legendary, worth the four year wait. I think sumo wrestling may be my new favorite sport. I love the pace and all the rituals. As we leave, the drums are playing in the tower to signify the end of the sumo day. Thank you so much for joining us for this mad adventure. There are more mad adventures in Japan to come, so please hit that subscribe button. It seriously helps so, so much. Hit that like button, and we'll see you on the next one.